Good morning, everyone, and happy Earth Day. I'm Melly, and I'm very pleased and excited to introduce to you my coworkers, Zakai and Aaliyah. Hey, everybody. Hi, everyone. We here are from TEP, and this is Bright Students, part one of the Energy Bike presentation. Since we are here from TEP, the very first question I have for you guys is, who is TEP? You guys help me out and think, what does TEP stand for? We are Tucson Electric Power, so we provide electricity for all of Tucson. Think about all the things that you guys are using right now and every day that require electricity. TEP is responsible for providing that electricity. So thank you so much for joining us. Sakai, what are we up to over there? Awesome. So before I go over our agenda for today, I just want to make one thing really clear. TEP takes the guidelines for social distancing very, very seriously. It may look like Melly and I are close together because we're right next to each other on your screens, but in real life, we are very far apart in completely separate locations. The reason why Aaliyah and I are able to be right next to each other without a mask is that we're actually brother and sister. So we've already been quarantining together in the same house for a couple of weeks now. How many of you guys at home have been spending more time with your brothers and sisters? I'm sure a lot of you have, but remember, even if you're staying at home and so social distancing, it's really important to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Try singing happy birthday twice while you scrub the front, the back, in between, get all over and just keep washing your hands and stay safe. Awesome. So with that, let's go over our agenda for the day. First off, we are going to learn about energy efficiency, what that is and why it is so, so important. Next up, we're going to explore our natural resources, which is where we actually get our energy from in the first place. After that, Aliyah and I are going to ride these energy bikes. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to power up all of these various devices that you see behind us, like the TV and the blender, that you guys have probably been using in your own homes these last few weeks. Finally, we are going to review with a game of Trivia Crack. Some of you might have played this before. It is a really, really fun app, and it's going to be a great tool we're going to use to review what we learned. With that, Melly, let's get started. Thank you, Sakai. So let's get started with our technology here today. Man, we have so many apps to choose from. Do any of these look familiar to you guys? Yeah. And do you guys see that background of our city? Tucson's so beautiful right now, and I hope that you guys are able to go outside, enjoy and celebrate our planet, get some exercise in, because it is gorgeous outside, especially given our current situation, it's very important to stay active while practicing social distancing. So let me pick my favorite app. It is the Energy Bike app. Zakai and Aaliyah, are you guys ready to ride? Did you guys eat a good we breakfast? We ate a great breakfast. On the subject of which, let's actually talk about breakfast for a second. Personally, I had a delicious leftover burrito for breakfast from Los Betos. I bet you guys didn't know, a bunch of the restaurants in our city are actually still open and serving food. However, you can't eat inside of the restaurants for obvious reasons. So, you can just get takeout. What my family did to be extra safe is that we got carryout, but then transferred the food to a different container before we brought it inside. And also, heated it up in the microwave to make sure it was tasty and safe. I had my burrito last night, but this morning for breakfast I had a delicious piece of avocado toast and some eggs, so I have a lot of fuel and I'm ready to bike ride. Awesome, yeah. So with that, let's go ahead and start riding. Did you guys know that whenever you eat food, it's stored as something called chemical energy inside of your body, and you burn that chemical energy whenever you walk around or talk or do anything else that humans do. In this case, as you can see, we are riding bikes to generate electricity. So, as we ride these, the electricity is generated in the generator on the front wheel. That is gonna flow through our wires and over here to our light board where all of our devices are plugged in. As you guys can see, there are a couple of different types of light bulbs. I'm just curious, which of these three types do you guys have in your own homes? Personally, I have all of this kind on the top, our LEDs, which are my favorite, the best type of bulb. So, next up, do you guys see that thing that looks like a lightsaber right there? That is our pedalometer, and it's gonna measure whether or not our system is getting enough energy. Whew, getting a little tired. Melly, can you take over? Definitely. You guys are doing great. That pedalometer is changing colors depending on how much energy is in your system. 
And you guys are doing great keeping it in the green, which means you have a good amount of energy and you're able to keep those things plugged in working. Now, if it gets to the white, we need to make sure in the audience, tell our riders to slow down because that means there's too much energy in our system. But once it starts turning red, we have to tell our riders to pedal faster. That way we can get it back up to the green. Do you guys see that watt meter behind Aaliyah? It has a number on it and it changes depending on how much electricity is in our system. We measure electricity with watts. So a watt is a unit, unit of measurement for electricity and it's the same way that we use meters to measure distance and pounds to measure weight. All right, for those light bulbs, let's talk about those because Sakai did a great job of mentioning them. The three different kinds are these here. Can everyone say incandescent? Incandescent. Yeah, so those are the first kind of light bulbs that we have turned on right now. And take note of that watt meter. Turn those off. Let's switch on our CFLs, our compact fluorescent. Everyone say it with me. CFL. CFL. Very good. All right, for our third light bulb, the one that you mentioned, Sakai, that's really awesome. It's our light emitting diode. Everyone say LED. LED. Very, very good. You guys, round of applause. You did an excellent job keeping our light bulbs going. All right, so this is all really important about our discussion of electricity and energy efficiency. And by the way, if you're just tuning in right now, I'm Melly. We have Sakai and Aaliyah here. We're from TEP. We're doing Bright Students Part 1 Energy Bike Presentation live, and we will be doing Part 2 tomorrow at the same time. Sakai and I are actually in, and Sakai and Aaliyah and I are all separated from two different rooms because we are practicing social distancing. But Sakai and Aaliyah are siblings. That's why they are together in the same room. Yeah. All right. I'm sure you guys have been doing a lot of web searches because you're doing online schooling right now. Help me out with this term. We've been using the word electricity a lot, but what is it? Yeah, that's a really important word. Let's define it. Google here tells us that electricity is a form of energy resulting from the flow of tiny charged particles, such as electrons or protons. Now, electricity, there are two main types that we're going to discuss today. It is static electricity and current electricity. With static electricity, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. If you've ever put on socks, rubbed your feet against the carpet, and then tried to shock someone, right? That is static electricity, or jumping on a trampoline and watching your hair stand up. Now, current electricity is a different kind of electricity but that relates to when we plug things into our walls at home or at school. With current electricity, we need that flow of tiny charged particles to go in a complete circuit, just like in the picture there on our screen. Now, I wish there was a way that we could demonstrate current electricity right now. Oh, um, hang on, sorry, Melly. It looks like I just got a Snapchat on my phone from one of our coworkers, Blair. Um, he wouldn't normally Snapchat us in the middle of a presentation, so he must be watching, right? We should open it. All right, ready? Go. Okay. okay. Did everybody see what happened? I kind of missed it. Um, let's watch another thing. I think right. it's coming through. Yeah, let's open up the video as well. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is exactly what I thought it was. Sorry, everyone at home. This is one of our coworkers, Blair, and he really shouldn't be Snapchatting us in the middle of a presentation, but I'm going to allow it just this once because he's actually bringing up something that's a really good demonstration of what we're talking about. Blair invented these things called UFO balls, and they are a demonstration of current electricity. So, do you guys at home see those two metal strips on the ball? Those are where the electricity can start its journey. And if I touch one of them, nothing happens. This is what we call an open circuit. But if I touch the other side, I can form a complete circuit and get it to turn on, which is pretty cool. So, if, I, if Aaliyah touches the other side, do you guys think it might turn on? Hmm. Let's find out. Does not. Until we complete the circuit. And then it will turn on. Pretty cool, right? 
Definitely. I think I got it actually. So when you guys were connected, you had the closed circuit allowing for current electricity to power whatever you, those, those lights in the UFO ball and those sounds. In fact, isn't that how those bikes are working too with current electricity? Yeah. But, um, did you guys get shocked from current electricity? No, not at all. The battery inside of the UFO ball is very small. So if there's only a tiny amount of electricity, definitely safe for a demonstration. I'm sure that you guys at home are old enough to know what electrical safety is and how to be safe around electricity. But if you have a younger sibling or a younger cousin, or if you would like a refresher, we have another live stream called Safety Land, which is all about electrical safety available from the link in the description. Go check it out. Thank you, Sakai. And Aaliyah, I actually have a question for both of you and our audience. Do we think that energy and electricity are the same thing? Let's think That's about a good this question. for a moment. Hmm. I know that they're related in some way, that's for sure. Definitely. They are most certainly related. So Kai, do you want to tell us why? Yeah, definitely. So energy is just the ability to do work, and it exists in many, many different forms. In fact, you can actually change from certain types of energy into other types of energy. This is called energy transformations, and electricity is just one type of energy that can be converted into other types of useful energy. Right now, we're going to go ahead and watch a YouTube video and learn a little bit more about these energy transformations. Now, the energy transformations don't stop once the electricity reaches our homes. For example, we transform electrical energy to thermal energy when we use a toaster, a hairdryer, or a space heater. We transform electrical energy to mechanical energy when we use a fan, a washing machine, or a blender. Finally, we convert electrical energy to radiant energy when we turn on the lights. Um, was it me or did that girl look familiar in that video? Uh, no, I, I, no, sorry, I, I don't know actually what I was thinking. You know, I think though, before we proceed, we should all do a stretch break together. Are you guys ready? We're going to do the TEP cheer. All right. So when I give out the letter, we're going to spell it together using our bodies. Are you ready? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Give me a T. Give me an E. Give me a P. T. E. T. All right. Woo. And for those of you who are just joining us today, I'm Melly. This is Sakai and Aaliyah. We are here from TEP live giving you Bright Students Part 1. And without further ado, I think you guys should start riding your, those bikes now because those look like fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melly. So yeah, those of you just tuning in, this is part one of Bright Students. Please tune in tomorrow, also at 10 a.m. to catch part two. Now, let's talk more about those energy transformations. If you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I talked about how when you eat food, it's stored as chemical energy inside of your body and you burn it whenever you walk around or talk or do anything else. What I didn't mention is that burning it in this case actually means converting that type of energy. In this case, we are transforming our chemical energy into mechanical energy in the form of the spinning bike wheel. Now, there is also a generator on the front of the bike wheel, which is able to transform that spinning mechanical energy into electrical energy, electricity, which flows through our wires over here onto our board and comes out in the form of light energy. Do any of you at home remember the name for light energy? It's totally rad. Yeah, if you said radiant energy, you were totally correct. It is radiant energy. So let's review what we're doing. Three energy transformations. Chemical to mechanical, mechanical to electrical, and then electrical to radiant. But we have a lot of different devices up here. So what would be happening, for example, if I turn on this fan right here? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Do you have any idea what type of energy transformation is keeping us cool with this fan? I'm thinking it's mechanical, sort of like the bike wheels. Definitely, yeah. It is exactly mechanical energy, just like the bike wheels. Now, what about this hair dryer right here? I'll give you a hint. There's going to be two. The first one is just mechanical energy because there's a small fan inside of here. Right now, my finger is on the cold button, so it's only mechanical energy. But in a second, I'm going to release that, and we're going to turn it onto heat, thermal energy. So when I do that, I want you guys to pay attention to how difficult it gets for us. So everybody watch that watt meter in three, two, 
One, go. Whew. Whew. That wow. was hard work. Doing multiple energy transformations is a lot of work. Melly, can we take a water break? Yes, please. And let's give our riders a round of applause. They did so good. Thank you, Sakai and Aaliyah. Let us proceed with our discussion of energy and energy transformations, but that's really important when we're thinking about electricity. And where do we even get electricity from? Let's use this app here to help us out. Yes, natural resources are really important and they exist on our planet. We interact with these, all of these examples, each and every single day. Light, air, water, plants, animal, soil, and stone. And natural resources do a lot for us, but we're gonna be talking about the natural resources that help us generate electricity, which are our non-renewable and renewable resources. Do those words look familiar to you guys? Yeah, so help me out. What would be an example, let's all think now, of a, uh, at least one example of a non-renewable resource? Oh, I yeah. think I know one. What about plastic? That's non-renewable, right? Well, that's a really good guess, Sakai. But plastic, do we use that to generate electricity? Not really. Mm -hmm. And yet, what plastic is made from, that is a fossil fuel, which is a type of non-renewable. Plastic's made from petro petroleum or oil. And other examples of fossil fuels are natural gas and coal. And we also place nuclear on our list of non-renewables. All right. So let's think about examples of a renewable resource. Hmm. You guys have one? I think I have an idea. Yeah? I think wind might be one, because when I was driving to California last summer, I saw a wind farm. Definitely. Is there anything else you can think of? Hmm. Oh, the sun. Definitely. So the sun, the wind, and water are extremely important renewable resources. We can also use the heat of the earth or geothermal. Now I'm sure you guys at home with your online schooling have had to learn some new concepts and perhaps doing a lot of web searches. So we're going to do a search to define what a non-renewable is tells us right here that it is a type of limited resource and it does not regenerate within a human time frame. But renewable is a resource that will regenerate naturally and is within our human time frame. So there's a big difference between the two. So of all these resources on my screen, do you know which one's the most, the one that we use the most here in Arizona or actually the whole country, and even the whole world right now. Ooh, I think I know this one. Um, hmm. I think it's coal, right? Yes. Very good, Zakai. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so coal is the resource that we use the most in Arizona and in the world for generating electricity. But what is coal, actually? Believe it or not, coal is actually just a type of sedimentary rock. And it is extremely old. Can anybody out there tell me how old is coal? How many years? Hmm. Ooh, Melly, yeah. Yes, it is super old at 250 million years old. Wow, Melly, that is extremely old. And where do we get coal? Do we just walk outside and find a piece of coal on the ground? Definitely not, right? So, where do we get our coal? It's in Minecraft, right? Through mines, just like in this video game. How many of you guys have been playing Minecraft while you're home? I know I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. I think it's so fun to play with my friends. So, how is this coal actually formed? Believe it or not, 250 million years ago, even before the time of the dinosaurs, there were plants and animals that were living that died. And then other things piled up on top of them and compressed it and compressed and smashed flat all of that organic material for hundreds of millions of years until it turned into coal. So, how do we actually get electricity out of this? And how much electricity is there inside of it anyway? Well, let's find out. If we just took the electricity that we could only get from this one pound of coal, how long could we power different appliances in our houses? Starting with a TV, because I know you guys at home have been watching a lot of TV since being home. 
I'm hoping it's a long time, because like you said, I kind of been binge watching some shows. Definitely. Yeah, it's a pretty long time. It's about seven and a half hours of TV just from one pound of coal, which is pretty good, I would say. Enough to watch like a whole season of The Office if you wanted to. Now, who at home has been playing some video games while on quarantine? I have. Definitely me as well, yeah. How long do you think our PS4 and our TV together would last? Well, let's think about this. It's using two devices at once, so I'm gonna guess a little less than just watching TV. Definitely. Since both of the devices are using energy, it's gonna last about half the time. Four and a half hours. Now, the item in your home that uses the most energy, the air conditioning. How long could we keep that powered? I don't know, but I'm hoping a long time because these Arizona summers are getting pretty hot. It is getting pretty hot. I think it's already supposed to hit 100 degrees this week. Oy. And that's unfortunate because we can only keep the air conditioning on for 15 minutes using this one pound of coal. As you guys can see, these devices take a lot of energy. And Melly, do you only have one device on in your house at a time? Definitely not, Sakai. In fact, in my house and in many of our houses, we have all these appliances on and running simultaneously. Did you know that on average, one Arizona household in one year is using enough coal that's equivalent to this animal on my screen. How much do you guys think an elephant weighs? I don't know, but I know that it weighs a lot. A lot indeed, 9,000 pounds. And let me remind you, this is one average Arizona household in one year. And in our state, we have multiple households and we've been using coal for more than one year. Say, did you guys get shocked when you were passing around that piece of coal? No, it pretty much just feels like a rock for right now. Somehow though, we need to transform this coal into electricity and we can't just plug our phone chargers into the coal. Mm -hmm. It's not how that works. What we do is something called the power plant cycle. So we take either coal, natural gas, or another fossil fuel and load it into a hopper. From here, it's transferred by a conveyor belt or in a tube into a furnace. In the furnace, we light it on fire. And there, the natural gas or the coal will release all of its energy in the form of heat. We use this heat to boil water and the boiling water travels through some pipes as steam until it gets to a turbine. That pressurized steam is gonna cause the turbine to start to spin. That spinning turbine is hooked up to a generator, which is also going to spin and using something called the electromagnetic effect, we are able to get electricity. So this is a pretty complicated process, but I'm gonna simplify it for you guys as much as I can. Basically, we are putting the coal through a variety of energy transformations or the natural gas until we can get something to spin. Because if we can spin a generator, we can get our electromagnetic effect. But what is that? Basically, we take a magnet and we wrap copper wire around the magnet and then we spin it and this produces the electromagnetic effect generating electricity. It happens in the coal power plant, in the natural gas power plant, and it's happening right here on our bike wheels. Pretty cool stuff, right? But this system is not without its flaws. Why does our fossil fuel use matter, Melly? That is a great question. Now, for those of you watching with us, did we say that our fossil fuels renewable or non-renewable? We said they were non-renewable and there's a really important concept when we burn fossil fuels, we're gonna discuss what happens to our atmosphere using the greenhouse effect. And therefore, whenever we're burning anything at all, including fossil fuels, we're producing emissions. How does that relate to our atmosphere? Well, our atmosphere is, surrounds our planet and it does a really good job of trapping heat from the sun during the day when it warms up. But at night, when it cools down, some of that heat is able to escape back into space. The heat that remains on our planet is trapped by the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane. Now, we are continuing to burn more and more fossil fuels. Therefore, we're intensifying the greenhouse effect. There's more emissions, and this is resulting in climate change. Sakai, can you tell us more about climate change, please? Yeah, basically scientists have noticed that our weather patterns are changing significantly because of humans burning fossil fuels. This has resulted in more extreme higher and lower temperatures. And do we want it to be any hotter here in Tucson during the summertime? No. I definitely don't. 
but this is causing natural disasters and other devastating effects in addition to temperature shifts. How many of you guys at home have heard of some of the hurricanes that have happened in the past couple of years? Maybe things like Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Maria. Yeah, these storms are not normal. They used to happen about once every five to 10 years maybe, but now they happen every single year, sometimes more than one in a single year. And they are devastating. I mean, take a look at this picture. These houses are about four to five feet underwater. Imagine what it would be like if you had to leave your neighborhood for months at a time, and then when you came back, all of your stuff had been destroyed and washed away by floodwaters. That would be really upsetting, and I feel bad for those people. We in the Southwest, in Arizona, don't have to worry about that at all. We actually have to worry about the opposite problem, which is not enough water. Do you guys see where the tree line is? That's where the river used to be, but that's where the river is now. And this is what's called a drought here in the Southwest. So, as you can see, burning fossil fuels does have some negative consequences, but scientists are working their best to reduce these negative consequences as best they can. We at TEP are at the forefront of energy research. In fact, we converted the Sun Power Plant on Irvington Road from burning coal to burning natural gas. And not just natural gas, we burn it in high efficiency rapid generators that are very efficient and about as clean as you can get for fossil fuels. But, like Melly mentioned earlier, as long as you're burning anything, there will always be some emissions. That's just science. Thank you, Sakai. Switching over to natural gas, that is great news, and it's definitely going to improve the air quality here in Tucson. I've loved and really much enjoyed learning about energy and electricity with you guys. We'll make sure to cover the conversation of renewable resources in greater detail tomorrow for Bright Students Part 2. Please join us at the same time tomorrow at 10 a.m. We'll go live once again and we'll continue this discussion. And as a reminder, we're recording these sessions and putting them on YouTube so that you can watch it again later down as you guys continue your education and online schooling or if you want to share it with some friends and family. I think before we go though, Sakai and Aaliyah, Let's play a game. Let's All right, do let's it. do it. All right, so we are going to bring out the trivia crack. Let's go. Let us yeah. do a review of what we've talked about. And I brought my scoreboard here so that we can keep score of you guys. We have team Sakai, team Aaliyah. We'll Woo place fun. your scores here. Hopefully you guys at home are able to uh, get all the right answers too, so please Feel free to chime in with your answers and make sure, Sakai and Aaliyah, that I read the whole question before you buzz in, okay? Okie dokie. All right, let's get started. There's a lot of good categories. Let's start spinning. All right, energy transformations. When riding the energy bike, you were producing electrical energy from what other forms of energy? Okay, this one I think is chemical and mechanical, because like Sakai talked about earlier, the food we ate is the chemical energy, and when we rode the bike, it was mechanical. Very good, Aaliyah. One point for you, and we're off to a great start. Let's keep going. We have energy efficiency. Which of the falling light bulbs is the most energy efficient? Oh, I know this one. It's the nine watt LED. These ones in the top, they are my favorites. Very good, Sakai. This is all correct. Point for you. All right, for our next category, let's see. Electricity. What do we call the effect of using turbines, copper wires, and magnets to generate electricity? I remember you talked a little bit about this earlier, and I think it's the electromagnetic effect. Yes, indeed, it is the electromagnetic effect. You guys are doing great. How are you guys doing at home there? All right, let us do our next category of energy transformations. When using a toaster, you are converting electrical energy to? Looks like I got this one too. Thermal energy, because that's heat energy. Very good. Leo, you're taking the lead here. Can Sakai come back? Let's see. All right, with our next category, my favorite natural resources, what energy source strikes solar panels to generate electricity? 
We haven't quite talked about this one yet, but I know that it's gonna be photons. We're gonna cover this tomorrow, right, Mally? That's right. Very good, Sakai. We will indeed talk in greater detail about that tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna get this one. So you All think. Right. What type of electricity did we demonstrate when using the UFO sticks? Ah. That's gotta be current electricity. Current wow. electricity. You're getting these really good. Must have been paying attention. Of That's course. Right. Very good. Let us spin for our next category. You guys are doing great thus far. Name the two energy sources that power clothesline. I know this one because my clothes always dry faster when it's sunny outside and when it's windy. So it's got to be solar and wind. Very good, Sakai. You're catching up. Good job. Man, you guys Thanks. are doing great. Good job. History of science. Thomas Edison's incandescent light bulb was invented in... Ooh, I know this one. Well, I don't actually know the year, but I bet I can figure it out. I know that there were definitely no light bulbs in the 1700s, but 1918 was World War I, and I know that they did have light bulbs then. So I'm gonna guess 1879. Yes, Akai, very, very good. Your history teacher is probably really proud of you. We are now at a tied game, you guys. This is exciting. Here we go. All right. Which of these is not a renewable resource? Unfortunately, natural gas is not a renewable resource. This is true. So tomorrow we'll make sure to spend time talking about those other renewables. Aaliyah, point for you. Yay. Next category, double, double points. Which of the following is not associated with climate change? Definitely volcanic eruptions. As we talked about, climate change is causing more extreme temperatures. Also, as the temperatures are getting hotter, the polar ice caps are melting into the ocean, which is causing rising sea levels. We also talked a little bit about those hurricanes and floods, and those are an example of habitat loss. Very good, Sakai, and here's your double points, bringing you to the lead. Natural resources, here we go. What two energy sources are used the most to create electricity for Tucson? I believe that this one is coal and natural gas. It is indeed our non-renewables, coal and natural gas, and we will talk more about that tomorrow as well. Tide game once again, man, you guys, this is great. Double points. Where could solar panels eventually be placed where they can operate 24-7, 365 days a year? I got this one. So. In order for solar panels to operate 24-7, 365, they need to have sunlight on them at all times. It's still nighttime on the mountaintops, in the desert, and under the ocean. So the only time it's never night is in space. I bet there. Very good, Sakai. And did nice you know job. we have solar panels in the International Space Station right now, too? Yeah. Wow, that's really cool, Melly. That's really cool. Yeah. Let's continue with natural resources. How long does it take the Earth to produce coal? I definitely remember you talking about this one, and it's 250 million years old, isn't it? That's right, super That's old, old, before the dinosaurs. All right, we have only a few questions left. Natural resources, about how many pounds of coal are burned each year to provide the electricity for an average Tucson home? It's 9,000 pounds, which you said was about the equivalent of an elephant. That's right, think about our elephant. Eight points for you. There we go. All right, down to our final question. The final showdown, double points. Methane gas can, from landfills can be used to generate electricity? I think this is true, but it's a tough one. This is definitely Yay! true. And we are at 10 points. Let me get it. 10 to 7. Yay! Thank you, Good Sakai. Job, thank you, Aaliyah. And actually, thank you, everyone, for joining us today for Part 1's Bright Students. We are so pleased and happy to be sharing part of our Earth Day with you at home. Make sure to stay tuned tomorrow for Part 2. Stay safe, and I hope you are learning new things. Take care now. Bye. Bye happy Earth Day. Bye. Happy Earth Day.